So there are several advances that happened in bladder cancer over the last five years. What I'd like to highlight is the issue of enhanced visualization and drug delivery in the bladder. If we look at uh, three quarters of the patient population, which are non-muscle invasive disease, as Ken pointed out, we tend to risk stratify these patients depending on our cystoscopic visualization of the bladder, as well as how the tumor looked like under the microscope. And based on that, the treatment significantly changes depending on the risk stratification in this patient population. Now, novel diagnostic techniques have uh, significantly advanced over the last few years. Typically, these tumors are, can, be can be quite challenging to identify in the bladder. As you can see, they're papillary in nature and of often are subtle uh, under the naked eye. The standard diagnostic technique is using a cystoscopy, a camera that goes through the urethra to examine the bladder and identify whether or not there's bladder tumors. This kind of procedure, I would say, at best, is 80% sensitive. Over the last couple of decades, there has been a lot of research looking into accentuating or improving the identification of tumors in the bladder. One common procedure more and more is being used is called fluorescent cystoscopy, where the bladder undergoes an installation of a compound where that compound gets absorbed in the bladder tumor uh, tissue much more than the regular tissue and accentuates it and makes it much more visible by the eye. So in other words, if you look at the slide here, it makes the tumor much more easily detectable uh, in uh, across normal looking mucosa. And if you detect it easily, you can also resect it completely and resect any unidentified tumors that is otherwise uh, would not have been detected with the white light uh, cystoscopy, which is the traditional cystoscopy. This table is quite busy, but it illustrates that there's quite uh, a bit of studies looking at this technology, showing that it definitely improves the sensitivity for detecting bladder tumors in the bladder. And at the same time, it does improve early recurrences if you use this technology while resecting or scraping the bladder tumor in the bladder. So fluorescent cystoscopy, in summary, it improves better detection of bladder tumors. It improves detection of carcinoma in situ. Fewer tumors are detected on recheck cystoscopy during surveillance. And the question is, does it improve the long-term recurrence-free survival? That is not consistent among studies. And what needs to be clarified is if it reduces the progression to a life-threatening muscle waste disease or the need for cystectomy. The other technology that adopted a similar approach is called narrow band imaging, which typically identifies and selects a certain wavelength of light that it shines and uh, evaluates the uh, mucosa within the bladder. And what it does, it accentuates the tumor vasculatures, making tumors better detected by the visible eye. If you look at the slide, on the, the, the slide, the picture on the right showing narrowband imaging, the picture on the left is the white light. The tumor is much more easily detected during narrowband imaging compared to the white light. Similarly to blue, blue fluorescent cystoscopy, narrowband imaging have also uh, been shown to identify more tumors and improve and decrease recurrences over the short run. Our Canadian guidelines published a few months ago, uh, quote unquote, states that enhanced visualization, whether using narrowband imaging or photodynamics diagnosis using fluorescent cystoscopy, improves tumor detection and early recurrences. The clinical impact of this technology on the long-term recurrence and progression, I think, requires further evaluation. The other aspect is enhanced drug delivery within the bladder. Two modes have been popularized and become more and more available across the world. I would say the first one is the electromotive drug administration that's approved in Canada and is available in Canada. And the second one is chemohyperthermia that is not currently available in Canada. The electromotive drug administration, what it does, it, it tries to improve the delivery of chemotherapy in the bladder by instilling an electrically charged environment where the chemotherapy penetrates better the bladder tissue and penetrates it for a longer duration, hence better efficacy. The other 
approach is where we warm up the bladder a few degrees above the, room, above the body temperature. And that tends to also have a similar effect when we're instilling chemotherapy in the bladder. And before I end, I'd like to refer to two important pieces of uh, information with regards to managing this disease across Canada. There's the recent CUA, the Canadian Logical Association Guidelines on Non-Invasive Bladder Cancer Management. And you can easily access it on the website, www.cua.org. And more recently, there is a white paper that came out through partnership with Bladder Cancer Canada, the CUA, and the Canadian Neuro-Oncology Group that looked at and evaluated various ways to improve quality of care in bladder cancer across Canada. And it's available on both websites, Bladder Cancer Canada and the CUA website.